Welcome to the Treasury of Solomon, where we go verse by verse through the book of Proverbs to find the wisdom that God has for us. Today's verse is Proverbs 1 and 15. It says, My son, walk not thou in the way with them, refrain thy foot from their path. This is the third time that we find the term my son in this chapter. This shows us that this is a loving admonition to heed this important and pertinent warning. We know that Hebrew students were called sons and their teachers called fathers. So there's also the connection of not only calling to attention, not only showing endearment, but also the intimation that an important lesson is about to be taught. This is a lesson that we all need to hear, and not just once, but many times. We all need a reminder. During the heat of the moment, when temptation is afflicting us, it's easy to become blinded by the God of this world, the devil. It's easy to let our guard down and succumb to his pressures. Being reminded of the dangers of going down his path serves as a check and balance to our carnal mind and our carnal inclinations and desires. The first thing that we find here is the phrase, walk not thou in the way with them. This is interesting wording, and it's directly related to what we find in the next verse, verse 16, which tells us, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. The wicked men, the robbers, are running towards evil. They can't wait to do it. They're rushing to get their chance to fall upon an innocent traveler and wreak havoc. This verse cautions us not only not to run, but to not even walk in their path. Don't even take it slow. Don't even go in the same way that they're going. Don't walk at all. Walk not. That's a definitive statement. That's a command. That's not a suggestion or an optional choice. Don't go with them. Don't join their ranks. Don't converse with them. Don't be in their company. Don't conspire with them. Don't be with them at all. And that's in any sense and to any degree. The next thing that we have to look at is the phrase the way. What way are we talking about? Way means their way of living and acting, which was a life of crime, theft, deception, and cruel murders. Proverbs 12 and 15 says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. It's the way of the fool, the way of men who don't think before they act, who don't think about future consequences of their present actions. It's the way of men who do whatever their hearts and eyes tell them without questioning their own faulty, fallen human judgment. That's the way we're talking about, which is clearly no way for the children of God to go down. Psalm 1 and 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. It's also the way of sinners, those who clearly, knowingly, willingly, and unabashedly deviate from God's will. The classic Amplified says, Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives, not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and purposes, nor stands, submissive and inactive, in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest, where the scornful and the mockers gather. The key part of this verse that we need to look at now is being submissive and inactive, which then leads to a man following their advice, plans, and purposes. The first word of the second half of verse 15 was refrain. This was a legal term carrying with it all the weight of something that's legally enforceable and something that's legally required. It also carries with it in the Hebrew the sense of even with force and violence. This is how much we need to refrain. Even if we need to force ourselves to not give in to their enticements and temptations, even if we need to die to ourselves and our carnal inclinations and desires, if that's what it takes, which it usually does, that's what needs to be done. We can't be inactive or submissive. We need to stand up and stand our ground. This is too important of an issue to let our guard down. We need to stay in the word of God and stand on his word so that we'll see the advice of wicked men for what it is. The Holy Spirit will give us the discernment to tell the lies from the truth as he leads and guides us into all truth. We serve the God who is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way we need to walk and run it, not the way of the fool and the way of the sinner. That's a way that only leads to destruction, misery, discontentment, and dissatisfaction. Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 to 14 say, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. We're called to go down the narrow path, the path where we may be all alone in the natural, but the path where we're with God, heading towards the fulfillment of His desires and His will. The last half of the verse said, Refrain thy foot from their path. Sometimes people don't refrain their foot. They have no self-control. They mindlessly go on with the wicked men. 
Jeremiah 14 and 10 says, Thus saith the Lord unto his people, Thus have they loved to wander, they have not refrained their feet. Therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. People wander, they wander spiritually, and they get themselves into trouble wandering down roads that the people of God have no business being on. We can't fall for that trick of the enemy, letting him lure us onto a road that he promises is harmless, only to lead us to our own destruction. This half of the verse carries with it the idea of not even starting on their path, not even setting foot on it, not even coming close, but rather staying far, far away. It's infinitely better to not start something than to try to stop doing that same thing later on. The more we grow accustomed to doing something, the harder it is to remove that something from our life. We grow attached and familiar, and we allow it to gain a foothold in our life. If we don't start something, we have no experience of it, no taste of it, so the temptation is naturally less powerful since it doesn't have your previous experience and enjoyment to appeal to. This is important when not going the way of wicked men. If we don't even start on their path, then we won't have to try to escape from it later on. We save ourselves all the pain, all the tears, and all the heartache that would have accompanied that. The wicked don't let the righteous go easily. It's always a hard battle because their only goal and object is control, which they'll do anything to maintain. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 14 to 15 say, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Then when we stand our ground, we can say with the writer of Psalm 119 and verse 101, I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. When we refrain ourselves, exerting self-control, refusing to give in to temptation, and resisting the enemy, we'll be like what we saw in Psalm 1 and 1 in the classic Amplified. We'll be blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable. That's a position we should all want to be in as the people of God, and a position that offers a far greater and far more compelling witness of our God. Let's close in prayer. Lord, today we thank you for your word. And Lord, today we ask for the wisdom and the discernment to see the path of sinners, the way of the wicked, for what it is. Lord, we thank you that we won't fall for the lies of the enemy, but that we'll see his deceptions for what they are, that they'll be exposed to our mind, and that we'll have the courage and the strength and the boldness to not go the way with them. Lord, today we rebuke his attacks and his temptations, and we thank you that you've made a way for us to be able to endure during those times of temptation. We thank you that you never leave and never forsake us, that you're always there right with us during the heat of the moment to protect us and to guard our minds and our hearts as you lead us into all truth. Lord, today we make our desire known that we want to go your way. We want to go the way to your will and to your plans and purposes for our lives. And Lord, we thank you that you lead us in the direction that you would have us to go. Lord, give us an ear that's sensitive to your voice and give us a heart that inclines to fall after you. Lord, we thank you for your protection. And Lord, we ask that as we go your way, following after you and your will, that it will go on to bring honor and glory to your name. And Lord, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. Remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. The wisest thing we can ever do is give our lives to Christ and be born again. If you want to have Jesus as a part of your life today, all you need to do is to invite him into your heart to be your personal Lord and Savior. You trust him that you're forgiven, and you choose to live for him who died for you. We'll see you next time as we continue to explore the treasury of Solomon and study the king's word together.